Um, hi guys, I'm Rafik as intro. You can just Google that if you wanted to. Do any of you guys know what this background image is? Does anybody know what this background image is? <laughs> anybody? <laughs> yes, correct, yeah. Um, well, this is the state of the internet as it is today. It's a huge place, kind of like space, and it's always expanding. Now, I'm 99.9% .9 sure that everybody here has a website, a blog, or two, and you're all part of this universe, which is the World Wide Web. Now, when it comes to building a great website, number one, there's you, the WordPress publisher. You're all suited up almost like Obox, um, wearing your, your business attire, and you've built this great spaceship or website using WordPress with the greatest themes, the greatest plugins, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and with what you think is the greatest copy or, or language, because you speak the language of your business, and you, no one understands your business or your niche the way you do. But the question is, when you look at your users, are they the same person? <laughs> um, we have various types of users. They're visitors, they're users, they become customers, or clients. Firstly, the visitors are the guys who just find your site and like, oh, read it, okay, cheers, and they never come back. Users are, if you have a product or service or social network, um, they'll be coming back to your site and interacting with other users on there every day. Commenting on your blog for, is one example of a user who actually interacts with you. Then there are customers who are buying your themes or your actual real-world real products using WordPress e-commerce or any other online platform. And then there are clients. You use, blo you use your blog as a platform to basically sell yourself so that they can purchase products or, or they can purchase services that you render at mostly premium rates in most of your guys' cases. So if you go back to you and the user, there is a big difference there. And then there's another play that comes into play, especially when you are a publisher online, and that is the search engine or search engines. In a South African context, the major search engine is Google, and there's also Bing, but if you look at your, your traffic stats, it's not really worth mentioning. And all three of these players, yourself as the, the business or website or blog owner, the user, and the search engines, see your website, your business, the content on that website totally differently, and 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 they interpret it differently as well. So our jobs as, as business owners and bloggers is to align all three of those users and getting the content that offers the product or service you're offering via your blog, whether it be content or selling stuff and, or services, like I've mentioned, to one, make the users happy, number two, meet your business goals and needs, and number three, in a way that search engines can also understand it. The first thing that you have is you've determined, okay, I've got a business and I have this great idea and I'm going to use WordPress as a blog and whatever plugin or whatever theme you require, and you start publishing stuff and you're like, okay, sure, but you look at your Google Analytics and there's nobody there. Uh, what to do next. Um, have you thought about what keywords your, your users are actually searching for? Like, like I said earlier, wearing your business suit, um, from an SEO perspective, you'll be talking about PPC and CPA and CTR, and normal users don't really understand it. Did any of you understand all those acronyms that I just said? Great, so I don't have to go into detail about that. Well, keywords are vitally important, and here are short, tweetable ways to find good keywords. Number one is Google Suggest, with the keyword suggestions. Um, you, you're probably going to look for a WordPress SEO plugin, and you'll find Yoast as number one. 
And using just, just using Google and nothing alone, just start typing keywords and immediately it will suggest other alternate keywords that you could be using. So jot this down in a spreadsheet or in a notepad or text edit text file. And if you are like some people here, you'd be using VI. <laughs> OK, so you have the keyword sug suggestions from Google. It's the easiest place to start. It's what people are searching for. Go for it. So tweetable tools that you can use in 140 characters and less. Number one is Google Suggest, which I have already gone to detail explaining how it works and how you can use it. It's, it's very obvious. Google AdWords Keyword Tool is the Google Ad, AdWords tool allows you, or it gives you an estimation of what the search traffic will be and the competition for the certain keywords that you have selected <coughs> that you're going to be writing copy about <coughs> on your blog later. So one thing I would like to highlight, though, is when you use the Google Keywords tool, be sure <coughs> to log in because you get totally different results if you're logged into your Gmail account or not when using the Google Keywords tool. Another place to look is Google Trends. Um, you might be considered an expert in your industry, but without following your industry's trends, you might not attract the same amount of search traffic. So everybody who blogs about WordCamp Cape Town today, you might see a spike in traffic tomorrow, but it won't be really last really long unless it's optimized well. Next thing is something that a lot of people don't understand because keyword research doesn't really have to be dif difficult. Go back to Google, put in quotes, visitors found this page searching for and whatever industry you're in. Um, there, th with, with that, you, you will find a lot of forums where you use certain plugins that actually show you when you're on the, on the, on the user forums with all the user-generated content, what exactly people were searching for that found that page. Because you found that page because you were searching, searching for this exact same index, for the exact same phrase that, that matches whatever your blog is about. Um, now you'll be able to see what other users are also searching for that found the same page. And this is a great way to find keyword ideas. Um, and a lot of times, I'm sure all of you have searched before and found that Wikipedia is usually number one or in the top three search results. A great way to gauge how much traffic that page gets and how much traffic you could get for ranking in the top three for that result is going to have a look at the Wikipedia stats for that particular page at stats.grok.se. Um, you can actually type in the, the, the Wikipedia page and it'll show you how many, page, how, many, how many visitors that page has had. So just think about it. If you were ranking in that place of Wikipedia for that same keyword, you could potentially get that much traffic. Um, it's kind of difficult to, to outrank Wikipedia in most cases. I've done it once only. But because so many people link back to, the Wikipedia, to, to, to Wikipedia articles if they, if they can't find any other valuable resources. And as you, as you guys should know, or if you didn't, links are one of the most important things when it comes to, S, to ranking well in, in search engines. So using Wiki, the Wikipedia stats, you can, you can easily gauge how much traffic you could acquire via search engines for a particular keyword based on how much visitors that particular page in Wikipedia has received. There are two WordPress plugins, one that Neil, um, Neil will, will, will discuss in, quite, in, in a lot of detail after this. And then there's also Copy, Copy Blogger's Scribe plugin. Um, those plugins do most of the work for you. So there's not much work you need to do with SEO. One, because WordPress is a great platform and it's built with, it's almost SEO friendly. Like 80% of the, the work is done once you just click install. There's a few settings and configurations that you, you, may need, you may need to do. I will give a, a full list of all those configurations in my blog post about this talk. I'll publish it either tonight or tomorrow morning on webaddict.co.za. Last but not least, there is a guy in his early 20s traveling the world 
called Viper Chill. He's, in Cape, he's, he's frequently in Cape Town. Um, start following on Twitter, viperchill.com. He gives you the best guidelines to blogging you can imagine. Down to keyword research, viral marketing, the works, Viper Chill has an answer. And it's not just do X, Y, and Z. He writes posts that are thousands of words long and goes into excruciating detail about every aspect of blogging that you need to know and also showcases some blogging case studies of people he has helped just reading his blog and following his advice and how they've launched their careers or their businesses using the WordPress blogging platform. Okay, now some, some real life examples. Your post title and your page title doesn't have to be the same. You've done, you've gotten all the keywords you wanted to and worked out what keywords you want to use, but using a keyword that makes you sound like Yoda is not the greatest thing for reading a blog when you want to use a nice, should I, I call it an old media type headline, something you'd find in the newspaper. So you could, you could keep that, number one, as your post title, but using the plugin that Neil will outline later, you can actually change the, the page title of, of your actual the blog post. So for example, in this example, I did a search for Google Rich Snippet Examples, and you'll see at the bottom there, number four, will be Google Rich Snippet Examples for the post I wrote on the MIH SWAT blog. But then, if you do exactly the same, a similar search for Google Rich Snippet Explained, you will see the exact same post with the exact same URL, but a totally different title. So what Google has done recently, or I'm not sure, I've only noticed it in the past couple of months, is it figures out what your intent is by the search query that, that you type in and click search for, or the auto suggest completes. And by either looking at your header tags on your page or the page title, whichever one fits the, the query better, it will display that in the search results. So what, 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 I did, what, I, what I've done in the past is have a page title and then headers on the same po in the same post with similar phrases or synonyms. So depending on what the person searches for, your, your page will be much more appealing in the search results instead of just having one page title. Okay, as you know, you can just see the, the actual title is Rich Snippets Explained. In the search results, it will be Rich Snippet Examples. Depending on what you search for, the same page can render different search results for, this, for the same URL. Okay, now to the evolution of SEO. Um, SEO has been around as lo long as search engines have been around, and people have been trying to game the search engines <coughs> with black hat techniques or Google's or follow by following Google's guidelines. And what I'd like to just briefly point out is all the different aspects and elements that go into a successful SEO strategy. It all started out with just basic accessibility, the, the fact that people could find your web page and that search engines could spider it. You had the right keywords. In your, in your meta keywords tag, and you rank. Don't forget, links are vitally important. Um, links from other sites to your page using anchor text, which is a word that you're targeting that's linked to you from another page or from another page within your blog. On, on, on the phrase you're targeting for that page, all count as links. Links from your own, from your own site are internal, links from other sites are known as external links. Along came those guys in the black hats, came the system really quickly, and Google, had, Google and, and Co. had to adjust the algorithms accordingly. Also, various other elements all came into the SEO ranking factors, things like SML, XML sitemaps, RHEL canonical, um, using keywords in, your, in the way you describe your images. So instead of uploading a file as img091453.jpg, you, re, you rename the picture or the image to wordcampcapetown2011.png. 
um, because that will rank in Google Image Search. And because you're using that image on a page about WordCamp Cape Town 2011, it works as another signal. And hopefully, it will, will increase your rankings. Location is also vitally important. Um, I'm sure all you guys have seen when you do a search and it automatically takes, hey, we're in Cape Town, and it'll give you the, the most relevant content from Cape Town. You can do that using Google Places. That will help your local rankings tremendously. Also, some things most people ignore because they go for cheap hosting of, offshore, overseas somewhere, is your hosting location is also vitally important. So if you host your website in South Africa, on, in a, on a server in South Africa by one of the local ISPs like Frogfoot or RSA Web or anyone else, or Hetzner, um, the chances are that you're ranking in Google South Africa or any location that you target are much more, is much better than if you host in the US and you're targeting South Africa, for example. Um, along came the public relations. Um, a, lot of a lot of bloggers out, out sitting here will know that we get sent a lot of stuff a lot of the time. Try this new out. Hey, vitamin water, it's good for you. You're right. Um, so public relations is, has also become vital in SEO. So if you're a business and you're sending out a press release about certain th things in, in about your business, for example, the Child Protect service that Trust Fabric has just launched recently, be sure that you're actually ranking for that because the chances are more likely than not that the m traditional media companies will write an article about your business, will not link to it or even mention the, the, the domain name. So if you're, you're sending out a press release about a certain idea or concept, be sure that you're already ranking for that concept. I'm not saying just republish the press release on your blog or on your website. But be sure that you have content, associated content that's already associated with your website or brand that is ranking for it. So people read, read about whatever in the newspaper, and they have, or they have a conversation with a friend, like, yeah, um, I was at the WordCamp Cape Town, and Obox did this great story, told a great story about how Obox evolved from building websites to a theme, a theme company. Um, they're going to go, so people, people like ourselves, I'll take out a phone and search for it or get back to a PC and do a Google and be sure to rank for whatever it is you're offering. Another thing that comes to play is badges and widgets. I'm sure you guys have all seen the I'm speaking, I'm sponsoring, or I'm attending um, WordCamp Cape Town widgets. Those widgets have Two, two purposes. One, it creates awareness about WordCamp Cape Town, but number two is it creates a great link with the right text and all the technical things that need to be there. It is there when you just copy paste that widget and stick it on your website. So the WordCamp website are getting tons of links from everybody who stuck a widget on the site. And think you could think about applying the same principles within for your own blog or your own, own website. A few years, a little, a little bit later, social media and maps came along. Um, I've already mentioned, um, we all know what social media is about, and it's everybody's on there. They're either tweeting, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm not going to go into detail about that. Maps, um, Google Maps, get your, place, get your business on Google Local. When people do location-specific searches, or, or search for a product or service by location. You, you guys have seen that little map that appears with little locations. Um, get on there, because you'll be surprised how much attention those maps get. Um, I did a little experiment for a website that, that, that I'm busy converting to WordPress at the moment and put my phone number on there. My phone rings almost every day just because of that map location, even though I'm ranking just beneath it. People who love the face-to-face -face or the, the, hearing the sound of, of the business owner on the other side. So get listed on, on Google, Google Local or Google Maps 
and your phone will start ringing without them even knowing you have a blog. Because some people don't have time to still look and read about what it is, they'll rather pick up the phone. Then there are more, many more verticals where blogs can come into play, especially when you're using it for e-commerce. Um, there's shopping search engines um, where you can submit your feed and you'll, you'll, you'll get additional traffic from those search verticals. And then there's Google News. Um, if you're a site like the Daily Maverick or Memeburn who uses WordPress as the publishing platform, they're, they're, they're actually little, they, they are full-blown publishers. They are news organizations. Using various plugins, you like the ex, something similar to XML Sitemaps made specifically for news, you can submit your publication, even though it's powered by WordPress, to Google News and you'll be indexed by Google News. Um, Google News, if you're in, in Google News, you have the upper hand because if it's a news-worthy topic and you search for it, you'll see those news results as top three before you see the organic results. So being included in Google News if you're a publisher is a great plus because it's a great way of attracting traffic and being in the top three results. Guest blogging is another way of gaining links, gaining traction, gaining traffic and also it will help your SEO. Um, I, um, I have a website which I mentioned earlier. If any of you guys would like to guest blog about something tech or mobile related, feel free to contact me later. Um, my door is always open. Then the press comes in. Um, I've mentioned this before. If you send out a press release, they hardly ever mention your URL or where they, you can find more information. People will end up searching for it. Be sure to rank for the content that you're sending out in the press release before you send out the press release so that it won't be like, oh, I read about XYZ manufacturing company, and but when I search for it, the, for the service they offer, they're nowhere to be found. Oh, but here's another site. I'll use these guys instead. That's your money spent on press and PR going to another organization because you haven't thought about SEO. It's like, ooh, we need to get into the, in the newspaper, on the radio, on TV. But everybody turns to the web first before anything else. That's in honor of Matt Mullenweg, who is not here. If you were at the last word camp, you would remember why. So. <laughs> The search has just continued. So now SEO is not just about getting the proper keywords and right tags and links anymore. Like that would work way back when. But now it's just gotten a little bit more complicated. But it doesn't really have to be. When it comes to social network outreach, you guys are already on the social networks. Make sure you connect with the people in this room and you guys can help each other out when it comes to SEO. A lot of you know like, what that's about. Accessibility is still important. Um, RHEL author. I'm sure when I, when I showed you those screenshots of the Google search results, you either saw Yo's face in, in the search results or mine. Um, that's something new that was just launched by Google at SMX Advanced called RHEL author, where you can actually use author, a special markup on your WordPress blog and link that to your Google Plus account and when people do a search, and you are the author of that particular post, your, your, your Google Plus um, avatar will display right next to your search results. That, because putting a, f a face to content makes it more human, will increase the click-through rate by a whole lot more. <coughs> like earlier when I showed you, there were four results, but because there's a face at the fourth result, I'd, I'd be more likely to click the face than I would just Wikipedia, for example. Um, for, for, pub for publishers like yourselves, especially for the bloggers out there, if you want to get your personal brand out on the web, apart from blogging, um, ha have a look at Raul Author and what it can do for you, because, hey, like being known in your industry is one thing, but being known in your industry and being known online is totally different. It's like there's, there's, ne there's networking and social networking, but yeah. Okay. So 
what, what will be the result of all this optimization and tweaks and technical things and selecting keywords, guest blogging, writing copy, organic growth. Um, this is just an example of, I use certain sites as a test playground for my, my SEO theories. And as you see those little spikes, it's like, oh, okay, something works and I'll go and implement it in the actual, the money making businesses that I am involved in. Like, there's a long list, but I'm not gonna go into the, that detail. I'm not here to sell anything. So, <clears throat> it is possible just using those few tips I've taught you now to see the exact same growth for your own WordPress blog. Okay, it's not the end because when it comes to SEO, it's an iterative process. So it's a lot like washing your hair where it's wash, rinse, repeat. With SEO, you do the basics over and over and over again. In three months time, relook at your keyword research, trends might have changed, the industry might have changed, and adjust your copy and your story accordingly. Okay, before I forget, and before I get to my end, I believe tags should be crucified. <laughs> From an SEO perspective, Everybody loves tagging their stuff with all these blah, 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 iPhone this, 3G that, whatever your, 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 your topic I talked about. But what that does in exactly the same time, it might be, oh yes, I've got these fancy tags and they have the, a nice tag cloud with the, the bigger tags because I've written more articles about a particular subject. So what, do your users really care? It might look nice, but does it serve a real purpose? The other thing it does is it creates a ton of duplicate content because every single tag creates a brand new page and on every single of those pages, your exact same blog posts are repeated. So now what's happening is, instead of having just one blog post in one category about, with a snippet about a certain article, you know, depending on how many tags you have, say you've, you've given something 10 tags because there's 10 different topics you've covered in the blog post, you've now created 10 pages with exactly the same content, and Google penalizes you for that duplicate content. And with that, thank you very much. <laughs>